parts. Mm. Brain fruit and glutes or hamstring and, and ooh. Recently. 
Um, and then I'll also do a creatine because I am trying to get a little bit more muscle mass um, going, which is a really great supplement. And then to go to bed, I will take ZMA tablets before I go to sleep. This, if you guys haven't tried ZMA, you have to because it makes you sleep like ridiculously well. So highly, highly recommend. Um, but those are my go-tos for supplements. Again, it's Believe that I use for everything. I love their products. They're super well tested and they're publicly, like all the results of everything that's inside of them are public. So that way you know what you're eating is actually good for you and what you're putting into your body is like real ingredients and not just like some other sketchy stuff that some other companies can definitely do. Um, so that's why I like Team Believe. What's your nationality? So I get this one a lot because a lot of people think I'm Vietnamese, I've gotten Korean. Filipino, all that stuff, but I am Chinese. Fun fact, I am adopted, so basically, I actually don't know what I am. I could be realistically anything, um, but from my knowledge, I am fully Chinese. Do you have any advice for someone who is studying to become a personal trainer? So this is a really great question. When I went to school, I went to school for kinesiology and I thought I was gonna become a chiropractor or physiotherapist or something, but I actually went into personal training and I absolutely love it. By no means do you need a university degree to become a personal trainer, but it definitely does help, especially something like kinesiology, which is the study of the human body. Um, super applicable to this career choice. If you don't have that background and you went to school for business or psychology or anything else that's not about the body, um, in terms of like actual like anatomy and stuff like that, definitely take a course that is highly respected. In Canada, the most well-known one that I know is DTS. I've done a couple of their courses and absolutely love it. The detail is great and so is the instruction. Um, but also there's obviously tons of other ones. Like I know some people who have their CSCS um, or go through NASM, which is NASM. Um, they have a bunch of other certified personal training certifications, certifications as well. Um, so definitely check out those. Why did you want to become a fitness slash personal trainer? So I know I kind of like went over it in a couple questions earlier, but when I first went to school, I wanted to become a chiropractor or a physiotherapist. And I really got into training more as like a side job in school. Um, I was a strength conditioning intern at the time and I really loved being in the gym and kind of learning about programming and all that fun stuff. And so I figured within my gap of like graduating to going to say my master's or chiropractor college, I would just personal train, give myself a little bit of a mental break. I ended up falling completely in love with it and now it's my main source of income. It is my career, it is my business, and I absolutely love it. So honestly, it was almost like a meant to be type thing, whatever. And I'm a huge believer in that. Everything happens for a reason. So me taking a year off and just like giving myself some time to relax after four years of school was perfect for me and I found the career that I absolutely love. What made you get into bodybuilding? This, oh, these questions are so good. This is the first time I'm actually looking at them. So I got into bodybuilding through an Instagram giveaway of all things, which goes to show like you can literally have all of the opportunity through Instagram. So if you are someone on the platform, make sure you're using it to the most of your ability. Um, but back to the story, I entered a giveaway thinking like, there's, there's literally no way I'm gonna win this. Um, and it was Whitney Jones giveaway for a competition prep for fitness girls because the division itself is relatively small and not that well known. So just bringing more attention and bringing more talent to the division was her whole purpose of the giveaway. And she does do it every single year. So I entered thinking, oh my gosh, I'm probably not gonna win. Um, and then I got an email that I was one of the finalists and I was like, oh my God, like no way. And then I got an email that I was the grand prize winner, which meant that I got my entire prep paid for. I got to fly out to see Whitney. Um, got my choreography done by her and I had my entire prep with her, which was absolutely amazing. If you guys are looking for a coach, definitely hit her up. She's one of the best and she is like two times Miss Olympia. So that's literally amazing to work with someone of that stature and that talent. So honestly, for me, I got into it purely out of luck and I really enjoyed the experience at the time, but I haven't gone further with it. Although I have my pro card, I haven't stepped on that stage again yet just because I'm kind of enjoying calisthenics at the moment and bodybuilding is more of like, a tried it and then I might come back to it later in the future. When are you going to start working on Olympic weightlifting? Um, honestly, that's not really in my, oops, oopsies. <laughs> that's not really in my foreseeable future. Um, I definitely respect Olympic weightlifting or even just like powerlifting 100%. The athletes are amazing. Just for me, um, I really like calisthenic movements a lot. So I'm gonna stick more to that realm of fitness. Definitely I dabbled in it a little bit, um, but I wasn't the best at it. And honestly, I didn't super enjoy it that much. It just was not my kind of movement. So I probably won't ever go back to it, but definitely have tried it a little bit. This question is for all my Toronto people out there. What are the best spots in Toronto to train outdoors? 
Uh, so I have two places that I go to, either the Calisthenics Park or right on Lakeshore, which like has the water in front of it. You can see the CN Tower has a big area of grass. And then of course the actual Calisthenics P-bars, high bars, they have some like lower P-bars and some lower chin-up bars as well, which is really great for people who are just learning and getting into it. And then my all-time favorite place to train is Canoe Landing. I am there all the time in the summer, at least I was last year. Um, and I plan on going back this coming summer just because it has a giant turf field, has some stairs, a great view of the CN Tower again, and just like honestly a lot of other fitness um, enthusiasts or coaches in the Toronto area go there as well. So it's a great networking spot too. So definitely check out those two areas. I'll be there in the summer. So if you're ever there, let me know. Um, hopefully I see you guys there. How many years were you in gymnastics? So I started gymnastics when I was, I think three or four. And then I went all the way until grade eight. Um, I retired after grade eight. I say retired because I don't like to use the word quit. Uh, cause I did have a back injury that was pretty severe at the time where it was just something that when it went out, like I could barely touch my toes. And at the age of like 12 that didn't seem very healthy for me um so i let go of gymnastics and then went into dance and cheerleading later in life but i'll be 100 percent honest gymnastics is my favorite favorite sport that i was ever in and something that i truly love even to this day which is why a lot of my training still incorporates a lot of the original movements from gymnastics what is your biggest goal in life right now oh that's a broad one for me I have so many small goals that I want to accomplish throughout the year. I definitely have my social media goals, my business goals, and like my own personal goals. Um, overall, I would say my biggest goal is just to always be happy with what I'm doing career-wise. Um, if it doesn't bring me a lot of joy and it doesn't seem like a passion to me, I don't necessarily like to pursue it just because sounds cheesy but like you only live once and if you're going to spend your day dreading going to work or dreading doing something like it seems like a waste of potential and time so for me i honestly love everything that i do every single day obviously it's hard work but it's all so worth it to see the results of your clients to see results of yourself to network with different people is literally amazing so my dream is just to continue what i'm doing and keep elevating it to the next level so being able to travel internationally and do workshops once that's allowed after covid um, being able to just take my instagram to the next level and try to do more partnerships um, try to do more fun challenges meet people that i've like pretty much idolized through my entire fitness career as well would be really cool um and then that's it for me it's just all about having fun so as long as i'm doing that i'm really really happy how would you start again if you had to take a long break and had lost almost all of your strength that is a terrifying thought that would be so scary um, but obviously accidents can happen or injuries can happen where you lose a lot of strength. So fingers crossed, knock on wood, that doesn't happen to me. But if it were to happen, I definitely would reach out to some of my really close friends who I know are trainers and just start with them. Like if I'm someone who's starting completely from scratch after losing everything and my strength has gone significantly down, I'm not new to this. I know that seeking professional help is definitely the best. And although I know how to coach myself and how to coach others, sometimes when you come back from something like that, you do need that external motivation and a little bit more. So I definitely would probably get myself a coach just to bring me back to about intermediate level and then take it from there. Um, but hopefully that doesn't happen to me because that would be really awful. <laughs> Have you ever considered being vegetarian or vegan? I've considered being a pescatarian, which is someone who only eats fish and eggs. Um, I never considered vegetarian or vegan because I'll be honest and I'm sorry if this upsets people But I literally love eating protein so much um, Steak is one of my favorite things to eat and salmon and other white fish I honestly love just eating my protein Obviously protein powder is a great supplement as well as you can get protein from other sources 100% It's just I don't particularly enjoy those sources as much as just having like I'm sorry again But having like a really good burger um, I will probably never be able to do or become a vegan or become a vegetarian just because I just love food so much and I never like to limit myself to too much. Um, maybe one day I will try like a 30 day challenge uh, just to see if I could do it, but I don't think I'd ever make it like a permanent lifestyle for me. Where do you see yourself in five years? Okay, so in five years, that would bring us to what, 2026? So hopefully in five years, I would love, absolutely love, to have my own gym. Obviously I have my home gym, which I'm in right now, which is just a stepping stone towards my ultimate goal of having my own gym with my own space, making it kind of a hybrid of the strength training and the calisthenics, something that I'd really love to do. And then honestly being able to, like I said, I think earlier in this Q and A to travel and do international workshops and meet some of my clients that are all around the 
world would be literally amazing for me. In terms of personal goals in five years, um, I will be 30, which is literally crazy to me. I will literally feel like an old person by then. Um, hopefully I will have a dog because I really want to have a dog. And then in terms of more personal stuff, like a boyfriend or husband or family, that is completely up in the air. I don't really worry about that stuff too, too much. I don't fret about it. I just kind of live my life and I think everything happens for a reason and everything happens at the right time. The longest it's taken to film a skill combination or challenge. Honestly, there was one in the summer that took me three days to get a version that I liked and I went back and I looked and I had gotten a version that I liked on the very first day. So I think that's a really good example of how much of a perfectionist I can be sometimes and how bad it can be, but also kind of good because it made me work on the scale for two other days and really condition it, which was really good. It was just sometimes we need to be a little bit less picky with our expectations, but definitely the longest time was spending probably an hour each day. So three hours in total uh, to get that skill, which was a P bar combination of me doing a handstand push up, half turn, handstand push up, another half turn, uh, way more difficult than I anticipated, but I eventually got it, which was really, really good. What are your favorite socks? So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will know I'm always in white-ish Nike socks. They are my absolute favorite. I honestly own 87 pairs of white socks, which is literally a little bit of overkill, but because I get them dirty so fast, it is definitely a necessity. Um, and I definitely do see myself buying more white socks. So hopefully at Nike, uh, sees this and can maybe send me a couple pairs and that would be sick. How to get over the fear slash embarrassment when filming in public. Okay, so this one, not gonna lie, this one takes some time because even now sometimes if I go outside and like it's an area that I don't know anyone, I'm by myself and I'll film, I'll get a little bit nervous at first, but then in my head, this is what I go over in my head. Will I ever see these people again? Probably not. Will they ever see me again? Probably not. Will they see my Instagram? Maybe, but in which case they're gonna see the cool thing that I post so it's not a super big deal. So just kind of go through those type of questions when you're in your head and like, do you honestly care about what other people think of you? I don't when it comes to filming because I know that I'm not filming for them if they don't like it. I'm filming for people who do like it. And I'm also filming for myself. So just remember those two things. I know it definitely is hard and it took me, it took me a while to get used to it, especially in say like an open gym. You kind of feel a little nervous. You wanna get in people's way. You don't wanna draw attention. You don't want people walking through your video, all that stuff. Um, but it does take a little bit of time. I would say just make sure that you feel confident in what you're doing. And remember at the end of the day that you're doing it for yourself and for people who enjoy your content. Mary kill bread, rice, and noodles. <laughs> this question is pretty funny. I would probably have to marry bread, love bread. I would have to kill noodles and I love rice. What has been your most serious injury during training? Okay, so I've had a couple. I would say my most serious injuries happened in university actually when I was in cheerleading, which is one of the hardest sports and one of the most dangerous sports. So people who don't think cheerleading is a sport, you're wrong. Um, but I had gotten a concussion, um, two actually really close together, which was really dangerous. And that was probably my worst injury because I still have long lasting effects from that, unfortunately. Um, and then the other one I had was I fractured my tibia. Um, and that's because I landed on a hyperextended knee during cheerleading, during like a cross tumbling pass. Um, the girl and me just had mistiming and I had landed shorts to not hit her. And then I had actually ended up hurting myself. So those are my most serious ones. And then ones that I deal with, I swear on a day to day basis. My wrists, they always get sore. People always ask me about sore wrists and handstands. You honestly just have to take a lot of good care of yourself and do a ton of bulletproofing. And even with that, I still get sore wrists every once in a while. Um, and then other than that, I pretty much have no other injuries that I really have ongoing. Um, I rolled my ankle earlier this year, but that was literally doing something stupid. So we won't talk about that, but that is all better now and healed. So I'm in a good spot at the moment. How old are you? I am 25. That is insane. Whenever I say that, I'm always like, oh, there's no way. Sometimes I say my age and I'm like, oh, I'm 19, <laughs> but I'm literally not. So I am 25 years old. I am a 1996 um, and my birthday is January 14th. How should I train to learn pistol squats? Any advice? Okay, so this, this doesn't go necessarily towards just pistol squats. This is towards all movements, whether it's a handstand, press to handstand, pistol squat, lever, whatever it is, you always wanna break down the movement as much as you can. So if it's the bottom half, top half, the full movement, break it down. A lot of people just try to go right into a pistol squat, right into a press to handstand, but you don't have the fundamentals down. Break it down to smaller pieces that you can achieve, and then you're in a much better place for success. So for a pistol squat, really roughly I'll go over it. You wanna make sure one, you have the ankle mobility, hip mobility, 
and a single leg strength. So maybe work on those individual parts and then try to go for say like the bottom half control, the pistol squat, like so say the negative or the single leg strength to come up from your pistol squat. So single leg extensions or working on your lunges. Um, and then lastly for the entire movement or balance, maybe work on a couple like balance squats on the BOSU ball um, or on a foam pad, anything like that. So break down the movements as much as you can and find movements that imitate the end movement that you're looking to go for. So like a good one would be doing a step down, which is essentially like almost a negative pistol squat um, and just doing it from an elevated height and slowly building yourself way higher. Uh, so that way you do have that deficit, but don't just try to be like, hmm, pistol squat, let me go right into it because it's gonna be a lot longer of a journey and you're at a higher risk for injury. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. I answered roughly around, I would say at least 15 to 20 questions. Um, if you guys do like this kind of video, I will do it again and make sure if you have any more questions, you can always drop it below and I will answer as fast as I can. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure you like, subscribe and comment and I will see you guys next time.